this second tutorial, I'm going to show you how to configure some of the Garmin Pilot setting. I will cover subscription and related financial cost and benefit, and finally how to set up Alert. So first, let's look at Garmin Pilot setting. To access the setting page, just tap Home and tap Settings. The first tab gives you access to some general setting. The first one is the About section, where you can find which version of the apps you are running. You can also find the phone number and email address of the Garmin support. If you need to report a problem, just click on the email address here and select your email application. This creates a memo with all relevant information that the support is going to need to analyze and resolve your problem. You just need to add the description of your problem or question and tap send. Let's tap general again to close this and open what's new in this version. We have already seen that in the first tutorial. This is where you find the list of features added to the latest update. Just a side note here, as version 4.0 and above brings a connect capability, and there is a new page added to the main menu that you can explore. Connects provide integration between Garmin's product. It gives you access to in-flight information, such as weather data and traffic info, when connected to uh, data link devices. You can also transfer your fly plant from the tablet to some Garmin navigator equipped with Flystream. You can even integrate with the D2 Pilot Watch and the Verb Elite Camera. Let's go back to the general tab. The next setting is the brightness. The brightness control is part of the apps and overrides the operating system control. You can also adjust the brightness at any time from any page. Just tap Tools on the upper right corner to access the brightness. The next setting is about controlling the screen on and off status. By default, it's set to Auto, and I usually keep it as is, but it's up to you. Next is the time format, again based on your choice. Personally, I keep it to UTC. Next is the flight condition color, here as well, based on pilot preferences. I use the standard setting. Next is automatic self taxi. We'll discuss more about self taxi later, but here I turn it on. Let's tap on storage location. Some Android tablets support SD card to expand storage capacity. The app supports that to store documents and charts. This is flagged as experimental, but I am using it and it seems to work correctly. This is a very nice feature as you can expand storage capacity without having to buy a new tablet. Let's go back to general. And the last setting on the list, alerts. We are going to cover alerts later in this tutorial. In small airplane, we use audio headset, so I don't see the benefit for ringtone. However, if you keep your tablet on your laps, the vibrate function can be useful. Again, select what works for you. Let's go now to the next tab, pilot info. This is where you input pilot information that will be used when filing a flight plan. So just tap the plus sign and enter your name and other required information. For this tutorial, I'm going to create a profile for Joe Pilot living in Chicago that I hope doesn't exist. In the next section, this is where you can enter your credential for either DTC Duet or CSC Duet. This will allow the apps to access weather briefing information as well as a filing flight plan online. I will show you how in future tutorials. Don't forget to tap Save to create the pilot profile. If the tablet is shared between multiple pilots, you can create multiple profiles. If you need to delete a profile, just tap the corresponding red minus sign and tap Delete to confirm. Next uh, is the aircraft setting. Just like pilot, tap the plus sign to create a new aircraft profile. Here I'm going to use the identifier November 123 Golf Papa. The type has to match what you will use in an official flight plan. I'm using here a Cessna 172. And for the equipment suffix, uh, the apps give you the list of official code. Here I select slash golf. And for the home base, I'm going to select uh, midway. Next is the color. Let's uh, select white here. And let's go directly now to airplane performance. For a cruise speed, I'm going to enter 110. 
keep the fuel unit in gallon and use uh, 53 for the default fuel and 10 for the burn rate. I'm not going to input the rest as it is optional, but if you want the apps to calculate more accurate time, distance and fuel burn, you can fill up this area and of course refer to the aircraft manual for such information. Don't forget to tap the save to create this profile. You can create as many aircraft as you need, but there is no way to duplicate a profile and just change the tail number and few other parameters. So you have to input all data every time you create a profile. The duplicate function could be a nice feature to have in the future version. Next, let's go to user waypoint. Here you can create any type of user defined waypoint. For this tutorial, I'm going to create a waypoint over a specific building that I want to take picture of. A waypoint can be anything you want and not available on the sectional chart, so difficult to locate. Like your house, a business, a specific landmark, or a specific reporting point. You just need to find the coordinate of the waypoint. Here I have used Google Map for that. So let's uh, tap the plus sign to create a waypoint. I'm going to enter the name, like building. Let's keep it visible on the map by having show on the map set to on here. And let's enter the latitude here 41.2577 and longitude minus 83.5493 and tap save to create this waypoint. Let's go back to the map page to verify that our waypoint is visible and here it is. If you tap on it, it will open the radial menu and we have the direct to option available here. Very useful to go direct to this location. Another thing about waypoint is that you can tap anywhere on the map and create a waypoint. Let's say I want to create a waypoint over this small city here. I have to center the radial menu on it to be accurate. And tap the waypoint icon and enter a name like city. And save. And here I have another waypoint created. Let's go to the next tab about weather data. Here we are connected to a Wi-Fi network, so this is the way we receive weather information. I will create a specific tutorial just to cover all the weather features of these apps in the future. Next is a GPS tab. Here we have only access to the tablet internal GPS, but GPS signal can come from other sources such as external GPS or Garmin Avionic that support Flystream. One benefit of Android tablets is that most of them have an internal GPS and based on my experience it works quite well with these apps. The last tab is subscription. So let's go in the detail of subscription and the cost and benefit aspect of the different choice available. Before subscribing you have to create a Garmin Pilot account. Here I will not demonstrate that but just tap login and sign up to create one and make sure you remember your username and password. Purchase subscription can be used on two different devices and your account lets you transfer all pilot, aircraft and user waypoint data between devices. Very useful if you want to have a backup device like your smartphone or when you change to a new device, no need to re-enter all information. There are three different options to subscribe to. The first one is a Garmin pilot based subscription. It gives you access to all documents and charts needed to fly paperless in VFR and IFR. You can purchase a monthly subscription or a yearly one. Next, you can add the georeference safe taxi option or the georeference approach plate. One caveat is that you cannot subscribe to this option if you purchase a monthly based subscription. I have created three simple scenarios to look at the cost and benefit of using such apps and flying paperless. This first scenario is for a VFR pilot, not in need of a lot of documents, such as a student pilot. In this case, the cost of the subscription is higher than buying paper. I believe Garmin should have a lower cost subscription for VFR only and student pilot. The second scenario is for VFR and IFR pilots that fly in a small area, something like two state. There we start to see some cost saving going paperless and even with subscribing to all option. In the third scenario, we see the impact of flying a larger area. Now the saving is becoming substantial and can pay quickly for a tablet. Of course, these are basic scenarios to illustrate the benefit and each pilot situation will be different. 
But one aspect that I have experienced is that having access to all chart and document make your flying zone limitless and give you the opportunity to fly to new places. And let's not forget that going paperless is not the only benefit. You get the situational awareness, weather information, flight plan, online filing, and much more. Let's finish this tutorial by looking at alerts. To create alerts, you need to have a flight plan. So the apps has some waypoint to work with. So let's do that quickly as I will cover this more in detail in coming tutorial. Tap home and tap fly plant. Let's add the starting airport here, one G0. On my way, I will fly over my user created waypoint to do some picture as plan. So let's type a building. And after my destination airport here, KFDY. So let's go back uh, and now we can see uh, the track visible on the map. Now we can create an alert. Just tap tool, tap alert, tap the plus sign. And here we can create two types of alert, time or location. A time alert could be something like after 15 minutes of fly, alert me to adjust a dig indicator. And you can make it repeat. So every 15 minutes you are getting the alert. So time start when you save the alert. That could be useful in some situation, but location-based alerts are more interesting. So let's create one using our current trip. So let's keep the relationship to before. Let's set the distance to three. For waypoint, select building, and the message will be prepare camera. Don't forget to save to create your alert, and now you are ready to go. Let's go see what's happened when flying. Look at the top center part of the screen where you can see the distance to the next waypoint. As soon as we are 3 nautical miles to the waypoint, the alert will pop up to remind you or your crew to prepare your camera. Tap OK to get rid of the alert message and continue your navigation. You can also create alert anytime during the fly. So let's do another quick example where I want an alert to remind me to call the FBO 5 nautical miles before reaching my destination airport. And here it is. This concludes my second tutorial about Garmin Pilot on Android. I hope you have discovered or learned something and please don't hesitate to post your comment and share your own experience on my channel. Thanks for watching.